morning. I love Saber School. Now, I'm not saying that just to kiss the ass of Mr. Father Johnny Go, because that's the truth. Because it changed my life. Here as a student, that's what I'm supposed to, that's what's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to go inside in a blank slate and get out and say, wow, I'm a changed man. I'm a man with magic stri and striving with a passion for justice. So for 12 years, I've been in school. That's my whole conscious life. That's endless hours of reading books, endless hours of listening to teachers and, you know, occasionally sleeping in class. But it's still part of that. I'll tell you now that I may not be the best savior out there. I may not be those that are engraved in plaques by the time I graduate. But that's a point here. Not everyone is like that. Not everyone is born with greatness. You don't go to school and expect to be the valedictorian or the, or the cum laude. I could expect that most of us here are just your random students trying to get by, failing math, and trying to find out the parabola and finding x of a triangle. See, here's an idea here. How about we focus on extracurricular activities? Because that's what I tried to do. That's what I tried to do. I took pride with how I took the most out of the little time I had in Savior School. I only have one year left, then I'm off to college, and that scares me. So what I did was, all right, let's join some extracurricular activities. As of now, I've had, I've had a hand in organizing interactions and facilitating them. Even joined Model United Nations and my little baby, the debate club. Now, things weren't always like that. Because now, high school is colorful. It's a rainbow. I'm having fun. These are the times of my life. When I watch TV and they say high school is the time of your life, this is it. I can say I'm living. But frankly, that's not how it always was. Because grade school was boring. Let me tell you a story first. At the past, I was a shy boy. You can ask any teacher here, and they're going to say, Raynard Lau, oh, that's a very obedient boy. When the class was rowdy, the teacher would say, why are you, why are you guys like that? You guys should be like Raynard Lau. And I'd be smiling, I'd be like, you know? Because that's how I was. I was so shy that in third grade, my father enrolled me into basketball, um, in basketball when I was first grade. And I was so scared. I mean, I couldn't play basketball. I was just so thin, and I'd say, this is just not my sport. And whenever I'd go in front, and people would be staring at me, well, I'd just crouch out, and I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how to dribble with my left hand, what more with my right hand. And so it scared me. So that in third grade, when I was in Dreamscape, an arcade that is sadly not here anymore, my dad said, hey, why don't you try out th in this arcade competition where you, where you shoot hoops, you know, that arcade hoop game. And I said, all right, why not? But I was scared, right? So when I did it, I ended up in eighth place. And so, all right, that's cool. I, now I can go to the finals. Finals. <laughs> and so what happened was they didn't get my score. I had to do it again. And so you know what I did? I cried. I said, I, I don't want to do it no more. I don't want to do it. I just couldn't take that pressure. I had no confidence. I had horrible self-esteem. So much so that in grade school, I chose not to do anything. Because I told myself, I can't do that. I'm just going to lose. I'm not going to play a sport. Those big boys are going to push me around. And so I was stuck in that rut for seven years. But when I was a freshman, I said, all right, things should change, right? I was telling myself, I want to do something more now. So that when I reached sophomore year, my friend goes up to me and says, hey, why don't you join the debate team? And I was like, me? I can't even stand in front of my classroom without wetting myself. And you expect me to join the debate team? I had horrible self-esteem. I said I couldn't do it. But I tried to. So much so that, well, I, 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 so much so that I was able you know, to try out. I said, going there, guns blazing. I was like, all right, I can do this thing. This, this is my goal. This is my time to shine, right? But what happened was, I didn't get in. I didn't get into the debate team. I was waitlisted. The only reason why I was still there, because my friends were like, oi, keep, tara, maganda to, angas to, cool to. That's it, not because I was good, but because I was their friends. And so that was a crushing blow to me. I was like, wow. This is the first time I stuck my neck out, and I got shot down. But apparently, you know, 
I wasn't that bad at public speaking. I would go on to go abroad. I would go on and represent Savior School in countries such as Korea and Singapore. That's why I asked myself, why not? I said, all right, look where I am now. I was able to go abroad. I mean, who would say that a club was able to bring you overseas? I was able to meet so much people. I was able to learn so much things that I know I wouldn't have learned in school. I said, I'd go out there and I'd meet people from different ethnicities, different religions, and I'd learn. Instead of being limited into a Chinese exclusive boys school, I would meet girls, I would meet Muslims, I would meet atheists, I would meet Swed Swedish girls who are not gay and who are not straight. So that confused me. I was like, wow, the world is so different. And I wouldn't have gone there if it wasn't for extracurricular activities. So, like, I was able to meet a British girl. And she was like, I said, where are you from? And I was like, I'm from the Philippines. And she's like, are you the Philippines? What's that? It's not like McDonald's. And I was like, oh no, it's more like Jollibee. But then they couldn't understand that. They said, wow, this guy's from the Philippines. They thought we were a village. They thought we were, a, you know, this small tribal hut with no internet. So it was kind of fun, you know, messing around with them saying, oh yeah, you know, we like cook our own food and like I dress up in like a river. So that was good. But I figured, wow, this is fun. This is what high school is all about. And I wouldn't have done this if I didn't stick my neck out. Now I'm not here trying to advertise, hey guys, join the bait. Because that may not be your thing. But it's my thing. And that's what's important. Doing what you want. That's why I commend those who ran for student council and won yesterday. Because that's hard. Going in there, campaigning, and saying, wow, I might lose. Right? But things work out. And that's what it's all about. Because high, I have to say, high school is not a chore. High school is not a phase. High school is an opportunity. It's a place where you can be more than what you were before. And that's what I did. I said, high school, what, can, what, what does it have to offer? While I was busy in class reading books of old dead white men, I would, I would be excited to go to a debate lecture that would be for three hours. Three hours about Mahatma Gandhi or the Arab Springs. It's just because it was my thing. Just because I liked doing it. I mean, in debate, I was able to meet a monk. Like a legitimate monk. So much so that he, he can't shake hands with a girl. Because if he did, he'd have to fast. Would you, any of you, be able to say that you've met a monk? So much so that people outside of school. Because these things opened my eyes. And because of that, I say I was more of a student now. I learned so much that, well, when I was in the curriculum, I'll be honest here, I was bored. I was sitting in class and I'd sleep. Because I'd say, wow, I, I don't think I'm going to be a physicist when I grow up. I'm not going to study algebra. But I didn't, say, I didn't tell myself I'd be a debater either. I just said I did what I like. So I have to ask myself, what now? What has the future have to hold? Because I only have one year left in Savior School. And I was like, I have to top junior year. You see, I, was, I came up here and I was tasked to change the world. Because, you know, that's what Ted's about. I'm supposed to come up here and change your lives, right? And I was like, wow, that, that's pretty scary. I'm here in front of people who are older than me, people who are much more accomplished, people who have done so much more, and I'm tasked to change your lives. Because I'm pretty sure you guys didn't come up to TED just to listen to us speak. But you came up here and said, wow, I want to go in there and I want my life to be changed. Because I'm not here to just boast. I'm not here to say how nice my life was. I'm here to say that you guys can start something now. At the end of this speech, you go out there and just go home and do your homework and sleep. Well, well at the same time, you could go out, meet your friends, and you know, like go to some charity, charity case like in Gawad Kalinga. Say, why not? I mean, it's there. It's there waiting for you. And you're just sitting down in your couch like a potato saying, I'm lazy. No, I don't want to go out, no. Because no. that's, that's not how it needs to be. My chance for you is that outside of this, outside of TEDx, you do something. Because we're not here to talk. We're not here to bore you. We're here to change your lives. And that's what I try to do. And that's what high school has done for me. But that wouldn't have been the case if I didn't let it be so. So I ask, what are you guys doing later? Thank you.